This Republican Congressman Tony Gonzalez of Texas joins us now. He is a member of the House Appropriations Committee. Yeah, the end of Bill's live shot there is, is really one of the critical issues. It's not just folks who want a better life for their children or, you know, want to make a better living for themselves coming over across the border. There are some folks coming across the border who are hardcore criminals, and Washington seems to be turning a blind eye to that. John, you know, the, the Biden border crisis has become deadly. We're seeing record number of migrants pass away due to drowning. They're drowning in Del Rio due to heat exhaustion out in uh, Big Bend sector. Uh, the numbers are through the roof. You know, last month, Border Patrol had to rescue over 7,000 people. And this is, you know, as I made my way around my district, my district's larger than 30 states. My county judges are asking for body bags. And I've got con constituents calling them Biden body bags. Things are out of control. It's not getting any better. We absolutely need all hands on deck in order to help solve this crisis. Well, is it out of sight, out of mind uh, for the folks in Washington? When you look at the numbers here, the southwest border encounters in the fiscal year thus far in January started out at a little over 78,000. By February, it was up to 101,000. 173,000 in March, 178 in April, and 180,000 in May. The numbers just keep going up, double what they were back in January, more than double. Yeah, Vice President Harris, you know, was designated as the border czar 87 days ago, and she's yet to show up. What would happen to you, John, if you didn't show up at your work for 87 days? You would be fired. It's time to fire uh, Vice President Harris, put someone in charge who wants to take the Biden, the, the Biden border crisis serious, work with one another. This isn't work with others to solve it. This isn't a new topic. Every president has had to deal with immigration and border security. We are seeing firsthand how this president is failing uh, terribly at it because, one, he won't work with others. He won't listen to others. Things are just spiraling out of control. If they remove Title 42, you're going to see the floodgates come wide open. Your fellow congressman from Texas, although he comes from the other side of the aisle, Henry Cuellar, uh, told Harris Faulkner that, that he would like to see the vice president down there. Here's what he had to say. All we can do is uh, invite uh, the, uh, the vice president. Hopefully she'll come down on that. But we're ready to secure the border and work with them. And we need to deport people. The people that don't belong here should be deported. Uh, that's a Texas Democrat telling Washington that the people who don't belong here should be deported. But Washington doesn't seem to want to listen. If you live and work along the border, you see this every single day. It's absolute pure chaos that this administration has caused. People don't feel safe at home. There's high-speed chases. You mentioned earlier the, the type of nefarious activities that is coming over, especially through the Big Bend sector, where you know uh, it, it's very difficult to track. People are dressed in camo from, from head to toe. These aren't folks that are giving themselves up. These are folks that are actively trying to get away. What scares me is this is a national security a problem. And unless the federal government does something about it, it'll continue to get worse. I love seeing my state going, hey, we're going to go it alone, but it's not right. And it's not fair to the state. It's not fair to the individuals. Federal government saw, started this problem, and the Biden administration needs to work with Congress in order to solve it. Yeah, Governor Greg, Ab Greg Abbott there in Texas uh, is planning to build, you know, a Texas border wall. Uh, he's even asking the public to contribute to the price of, uh, of building it. He's also asking other governors from other states to send troops, to send enforcement help in. Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis says he will do so, and there are others apparently uh, considering it. But, yeah, isn't it a federal job to enforce the nation's borders? It absolutely is. And, and look at my, you know, my friend of the South, Henry Cuellar, on the other side of the aisle. But we, we've worked together. We've got a piece of legislation that helps solve this, along with Senator Cornyn and Senator Sinema, bipartisan, bicameral piece of legislation. I would say Congress is willing to do the work on our end, but the, there's nobody home at the administration. They've got this head in the sand. We know what's best for you. And oh, by the way, we're not even going to visit you. I mean, that is so disrespectful to everybody along the border. Meanwhile, migrants are dying at record numbers. I mean, there is blood on the hands 
of the Biden administration. Let's uh, talk a little bit about infrastructure. Um, that's one of the big topics in Washington right now. And there is a, after President Biden submitted a more than $2 trillion infrastructure plan that, well, in the eyes of many, was not entirely infrastructure, uh, there is a slimmed down version, a little under a trillion, that seems to be gaining some traction. What do you think of that legislation? I mean, what a deal. Only $1 trillion instead of $6 trillion. I mean, one, the spending has gotten and gotten really out of control. I will say Republicans have really pushed hard to, for a bipartisan uh, infrastructure package. And, you look, our roads are crumbling. Our bridges are falling apart. Our ports need to be updated. There's no doubt about that. But there's a couple of red line items for us. One, we will not accept any uh, raising of taxes. That's one. I think there, I think there's an opportunity maybe to reappropriate some uh, COVID funds that haven't been spent. I think that's a, an opportunity to get it going. But it re we really have to have the discussion on what is infrastructure. And the other thing I would add is I would like to see some cybersecurity aspect in there. We've seen some of uh, the, the most recent things occur with the pipeline, with the meat factory and others, meat plants and others. So we got to ensure cybersecurity is included in that infrastructure discussion. There seems to be growing concern among the American public uh, that all of this spending is going to bring on the kind of inflation we haven't seen since the 70s and 80s. According to a Monmouth University poll, when asked how concerned are you that President Biden's spending plans could lead to inflation. 47% say they are very concerned, 24% somewhat concerned, and you can see the rest of the numbers there. Sounds like you're concerned as well, Congressman. Oh, the, the, the cost is rising through the roof. I mean, you can't buy a home, uh, the cost of home prices. And, and remember, the, uh, a home is core part of the American dream. So what does that mean? You basically get priced out of owning part of the American dream. You can't build a playground in your backyard be, for your children because lumber is through the roof. You know, you can't take this uh, family vacation. You've been cooped up in your house for over a year. You can't take a family vacation, you know, to Disney or somewhere else because gas prices are through the roof, not to mention everything is going up. This is a problem. We have to control the spending. And, and it's, it's not just about what you spend, it's what you spend it on and how much. I mean, six trillion is just ridiculous. One trillion, the fact that we're throwing trillions around like it's nothing is a scary. Congressman Tony Gonzalez, Republican of Texas. Congressman, thank you. Thank you.